Hi guys, welcome. I'm Melissa. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to be bringing you my May favorites today. I have several plants that I want to share with you for this month. These are plants that have just stood out to me a little bit more, or maybe there's like a new leaf or a new growth with the plant that's made me like fall in love with it. I'm really excited to share these with you for this month. And yeah, let's get started. Star says hi. Hi. You ready to get started on the favorites? Yeah, you gotta look at the camera. Looky here, over here, say hi. Don't look at me, look at the camera. No? You wanna look at me? Yeah. <laughs> Number one is going to be an alocasia. If you missed my plant update video I did recently, I mentioned in that video some of my alocasia have been coming down with a fungal infection. I believe the cause, which I realized after I filmed that, what are you doing? That the cause was actually from me wiping the leaves with a microfiber glove. You know those cute little gloves that you see? I wasn't cleaning them in between, but I was cleaning them after it was washed. Like I wasn't spreading anything around. Like I had washed the gloves and used a clean glove for each one. That's what I believe. I just believe it wasn't sanitized properly. They all got affected, pretty much all of my alocasia. I've had to cut a lot of them back, which is really sad. Like my capria is down to one leaf now. My Friday, I cut like several more leaves off. I'm just really sad about it, but I have a positive alocasia growth update and I'm really excited to show you because it popped this leaf out and I am in love with it. I am in love with it. Mm, this one here, this is my variegated one and it's the one that like pretty much went dormant and lost all the leaves. Now that I think about it, this one could have had that same fungal infection. It did have some spider mites, which I think stressed it, but that's the new leaf it popped out. Isn't that gorgeous? It is stunning. I do have a new leaf coming in up here. It's currently living in stratum. You can see stratum roots. And I have it in my Ikea cabinet here and it's getting really good light, really good humidity, really good temperature in there, and it's doing amazing. I I don't even wanna to touch alocasia leaves anymore without like clean, sanitized hands. I'm just so worried I'm gonna cause something to spread. And I also wanna show you this little guy. This is a corm from this one. And this one again had some spider mites. It was in my window, and it caught some spider mites from a nearby plant but I did spray it. It has two cute little leaves. They're adorable. Child, as soon as I go to film, there were no cats in here like five minutes ago. And as soon as I turn the camera on, it's always someone. Luna was in here earlier. I was trying to take some photos. And now you're in here. Yeah. I know I love you. I love you, but mommy's filming right now. I know, I know. I'm obsessed with the fried eggs. I do have another one that is growing. It has one all green leaf and one that has some speckling, but these two right now are my favorites just because of that variegation that I'm getting on these ones, especially this one. I am just obsessed with this leaf. It is beautiful, it is stunning. I'm just so happy that it's growing back for me. I was so worried that I had accidentally killed it. But again, I'm trying not to mess with my plants that much. I'm gonna let this live in stratum for a while. I want it to get a really established root system and I want like three or four leaves at least before I consider moving the substrate. I actually got some pond. I'm gonna be doing some allocation in pond and I don't know if I should do this one in pond. So let me know, should I try this one in pond or not? Since I haven't grown in pond before, it's new to me, I don't really wanna risk something happening to this one or should I just pot it in my normal mix? Let me know what you would do if you like pond. But I love this little guy. It's made me so happy to see this come back. I love these. So hands down, this has definitely been one of my favorites for this month. I just love the fry deck. I love alocasia. The variegation is stunning on this one. So I can't wait to grow a happy plant back. I'm so excited and 
yes, I can't wait for more growth. Next up is another one that I'm having to grow back. This is my Philodendron Majestic. I have been obsessed with these leaves this past month. It gave me this one recently and it is stunning. Look at that sheen, that color. I'm obsessed and even the backside, you guys, look at that. And this is another new leaf here. And I have a little new baby one. I have lots of roots. I'm growing it back in moss here. And I have a lot of roots coming back. And okay, I'm gonna lock you guys out while I film. But yes, I'm obsessed with this plant. So the Majestic is a hybrid of the Varicosum and the Sorderoy, which I have both of those and I love both of those. I featured my Sorderoy last month in my favorites. And the varicosum I have actually behind me, it's right there growing up a pole. The sorderoy is just gorgeous. I like the sorderoy a little bit more than the majestic, but for some reason this month, I think it was this, this leaf here that did it. This leaf has caused me to be like obsessed with this plant. I love like the neon, it's like a lime green neon pop like that veining in different light levels. I don't know if it's the way the leaves are coming in or it just being under high light in my cabinet, but I am just obsessed with that. It is gorgeous. So definitely one that every time I look at my cabinet, my eyes immediately go directly to this one. So I am obsessed with this this month. I can't wait to get it back on a pole and start climbing. I'm gonna let the root system get more established and I can't wait, hoping to do that for next month. I really hope I can get it on a pole in the next few weeks so I can let it climb and take advantage of the growing season. Uh, I just can't wait. <laughs> this is another favorite for this month, this Epi Marble. I'm obsessed with it. I think it's the variegation pattern that I love. I just love the white with the green specks of variegation. It already has a split leaf and it's already pushing new growth since I put this on a pole. I did do this one in a video on my channel recently. I took you through the process from start to finish. I used my moss pole mix. This is a small grow pole from Thickly and I'm obsessed. Look at that. So I have a new leaf coming in here as well as on this side. And then I also have two more nodes that are growing. So I have a total of four um, vines. This one actually is off the pole, but I'm going to have to anchor it on once it grows a bit more, but I have a new leaf there too coming in. I feel like once it actually starts climbing in here and attaching, it's going to grow really quickly. I love Epipremnum plants. The Sabu Blue is one of my favorites behind me, that one there on a pole. I love my big plants and I love big moss poles, but there's something about a cute, petite little plant like this when it starts out that I'm obsessed with. I love little baby plants. So many of my plants started tiny. So when I have a cute little plant like this, I just get really obsessed with it. I don't know, it's just so gorgeous. And I'm just so happy that it's doing well now. And I love it so much. So definitely been a favorite for this month. I also wanna share with you my Manjulopothos. I believe I may have featured this last month. I don't remember, but I'm gonna show it again because again, it's another one that I'm still obsessed with. I think I did show it last month, yes. I remember showing that leaf there. I have not strayed away from this plant. Although the newest leaf is mostly green, which is really sad. It doesn't have like the pretty variegation. Ah, I just, I'm obsessed with it. And look at all those roots in there. Do you see that? I recently added an extension on and I have, I don't know how many vines I have in here. I have at least three or four that are growing. I think I have three, four, three or four. I don't remember now. It's hard to tell. Again, it's just one that I'm so excited for. You know, when it gets to be the size of some of those ones behind me, I'm gonna be obsessed with it. I just already know. They're so easy too, easy going like a pothos. And yeah, I can't say enough good things about it. I highly recommend getting one and letting it climb, do it you are gonna be obsessed. This next one, I haven't really shown that much and it's one that I feel like I've probably fallen in love with over the past couple weeks, I would say. 
and I do need to repot it and extend it because it's at the top. This is my Jessina pothos. I do have a trailing basket where this one started from. This is uh, cuttings that I took off of my trailing pot to do on a pole and I have Right now I have two vines that are climbing with the third one way down low. Actually I have two that are way down low. So I think I have a total of four. I wish I would have done more, honestly. <sighs> Cause one vine tends to overpower the rest and I don't know, this one's been a little bit of a slower one to climb for me. I feel like I've had it on a pole for a while. I don't remember exactly when I put it on here. Um, I think I did this last summer sometime, but again, I feel like it's not, it hasn't climbed very much, but it is starting to size up and the leaves are gorgeous. Like, look at that. That variegation is stunning. I hope it's picking up. It's just beautiful. <laughs> again, pothos epipremnum are some of my favorite plants. I love them. They might be, I don't know, they might be just overall, like besides Monstera, I feel like Apropremnum. And since Alocasia are giving me a hard time right now, I feel like Apropremnum is probably up there. I feel like these plants never give me any issues as far as pests go, and they're so easy going, and I love them. And they're so beautiful. It's like so many beautiful varieties. So I highly recommend if you can get your hands on a Jessiana definitely go for it. The leaves tend to fade to a darker green over time and the newer leaves stay more vibrant. That's how it is with my trailing basket. The whole top and middle is more of like a darker green now, kind of resembling a jade pothos. And a lot of the new growth is this vibrant green. That's the only negative I have to say about it is just the fading that it does. But I feel like this one on a pole has kept the collar a little bit longer. I don't know what it is with that, um, but it's beautiful. I just love, love, love the color. It's so pretty. I got lucky to find this at a big box store, the trailing basket uh, two years ago, I believe I've had it now. So yes, I'm obsessed. I definitely am going to be switching it to my moss pole mix very soon and extending it. I just gotta make more pole extensions. I am gonna be doing a lot of pole chopping soon. I thought I was gonna get to them this week, but we'll see maybe later this week. I'm gonna be chopping and extending and kind of getting the rest of my pole situated. I, Cause I have some bigger pole chops to do and I wanna get the rest of them taken care of before I go to chop these. Cause I have a lot to do with my poles coming up here. So yeah, but I'm obsessed with this one uh, lately and I can't wait to get bigger leaves like my Marble Queen. That would be amazing. My next favorite, I'm taking you over here with this beautiful Anthurium. I have been obsessed with her this month. This is my big hybrid. I love her. I featured her in my, um, when I did my plant updates. She's beautiful. She has some sort of fungal bacterial infection I believe that she caught. I don't know if it somehow transferred from my alocasia, I'm not sure. Um, but I did spray her. This is a new leaf that she just gave me. I didn't tell you what she is. She's a Magnificum Crystallinum hybrid. But the reason why I've been so obsessed with her, so she has an inflow here, but this inflow is gonna give me berries. Yes, let me twirl her around a little bit more. Da, 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 da. This inflow here, look at that. Let me bring you closer. She is gonna give me very soon. I cannot wait to get little baby Anthurium. My only problem with this is I don't remember what I crossed this inflow. I didn't label it and I'm so mad at myself. I have a few possible anthuriums at that time that had pollen. It would have been with my clary, my dresserly, or my podata radiatum. I don't know if those can cross pollinate. I honestly have no idea. I'm thinking it was either my clary or my dresserly. I feel like my dresserly had a small inflow that had pollen and I just did it for fun. Or I just did it with my clarinervium. Again, I don't remember. So if these, if I can get little berries 
and they grow, maybe if they resemble more of a clary leaf, maybe it'll be with that or a dresser leaf. I'm not quite sure. I wished I would have labeled it. I honestly wasn't expecting it to pollinate. I feel like there's gonna be so many berries and I don't really wanna to touch it. So she was actually crossed previously, the inflow, it was with the, I believe with the clary. Again, it was one that I didn't label and the inflow died. It was starting to, it didn't get red like this, but it just started browning and the whole thing died. But this one is definitely, I feel like I'm gonna get berries very soon. They're definitely forming. I feel like this has happened over the course of the last few weeks. It's changing pretty rapidly with this one. So needless to say, I am obsessed. I have her potted into a big 10 inch pot Ugh. right here. I recently upsized her. She's in my, she's in a very chunky aerated mix. It is mostly orchid bark, perlite, and I have LECA in here. It's, I guess it's similar to my moss pole mix is what she's planted it. And then I have her top dress with moss, but I'm obsessed with this anthurium. She is just big, beautiful. I grew her from a baby to just a tiny seedling and I'm happy to see her like be thriving like this minus whatever issue, fungal issue. And I don't know if it's fungal. To me, it looks like it is because it's weird the way that it's spread on the edge. And it's on some other leaves too, which makes me believe, I don't think I'm causing like a watering issue or anything, but yes, I'm obsessed with her. And I know next month I'm gonna be obsessed with her too, because if I get little berries and I'm gonna try to grow them and grow little baby anthurium seeds. So I'm gonna be obsessed with her for a while. And I love her. She's my favorite anthurium that I own right now. And I just, I love the leaves. They're beautiful. Anthurium are beautiful. So I definitely wanna own more in my collection one day. Um, I would love to get some like a red crystal or some like dark form like Ace of Spade or something like that one day. I don't know, there's so many different like varieties. There's so many out there. I feel like I don't really know all the anthuriums out there, but I love her. She's definitely been my favorite and yeah, I can't wait. I'm crossing my fingers. I can, you know, grow some baby anthuriums. Next up is this Florida ghost. I'm obsessed with this Florida ghost. I don't know what it is. It is beautiful. Look at that. I'm obsessed with those leaves. They're just so strikingly beautiful. I love like the minty whitish green tones. It's such a beautiful plant. Every time I go to the shelf, I immediately am drawn to it. It's kind of growing up a little towards the grow light. The leaves are kind of lifted up. So that's kind of, I have to like tilt it down to see the leaves a little bit. And I've repotted it recently into my moss pole mix. You can see some healthy new roots in there. I probably changed it, it's been a few weeks, I would say, but yeah, you can see a lot of healthy roots in there. And I have a lot of roots into the pole. I feel like this one, the internodal spacing is kind of short, so it'll be a while before I go to extend it because the last node is down here. I just love the full bushy look. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I think I like this plant over my, even my Florida Beauty that has the beautiful variegation. There's just something about the ghosty leaves that I'm obsessed with, that color and everything, that tone. I highly recommend getting a Florida Ghost. It's so easy going. I did get spider mites on this one recently because it's a phyllo that, you know, a lot of my phyllos got them, but they're gone now. I have some more white leaves towards the bottom, but they're beautiful. Mine isn't really fading to too much of a dark green. It's definitely more of a mint, I feel like, but it's beautiful. It's definitely one of my top favorites for sure. I have two more plants left I wanna show you for this month. And this one is one of my Monstera ties. Ooh, let me take the bug bag off so you can see it. It is beautiful. This is my original Monstera tie, the one that I grew from a node. I do have, I think, one or two old videos on this plant. And it's gorgeous. It gave me a new leaf recently here in the middle. This one's my favorite with that spot of cream on it. 
and you guys, it is growing so many new roots, so many healthy roots in here now. You can see them all here, and I have some all throughout here. So this one had rot. It's been repotted into my normal mix. Look at those roots on that. Oh, makes me so happy. And it's doing amazing now. And I'm so happy that it's growing back. When you get rot on your Monsteras, it's just so scary, especially when, you know, you thought you were doing everything right. And, you know, a lot of you guys know the story as to why this got rot. But this mix, my mix is just, I just love it for my plants. And they're obviously responding really well to it. And they're growing happy, healthy roots. So I love, 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 love Monstera. And Monstera Thai, I do really love. I'm really happy that I have it. And it's beautiful. And I'm obsessed. I do have one tiny fenestration there on the new leaf, secondary fenestration. So I feel like it's gonna take some time before it decides to push a new leaf. I feel like once it grows some enough like happy, healthy roots, it'll push a new one. I kind of have it in the pot as a crawler right now, kind of how it's situating. It's like growing straight instead of up. So I might continue to let it crawl and see what it does. I actually kind of like the look of it crawling like that instead of climbing, but we'll see. I feel like this one, it kind of bounced back, I feel like the quickest out of all of them. I do have a lot of new growth on my elbows and my Monstera Aria is still kind of stuck pushing its new leaf. I feel like once it pushes its new leaf and it finally like shows me that it's happy, then I'll definitely feature it because I love my Aria. I feel like it's still trying to work on growing new happy healthy roots. That one is in an eight inch. I wish I had potted it down to a six inch. So I feel like it's gonna take some time for it to reestablish its root system. This one I potted into, I think this is a five inch. So it's going to like get more root bound quickly in here. And I feel like, you know, once it gets a healthy root ball, then I'll upsize it slowly. So I feel like that's why that one probably stabilized a little bit quicker because I did pot down on it because I did lose about half the root system. But I love this one. I can't wait until I get another new leaf and I'm just happy that it's happy and it's growing back. This new leaf is still very, very beautiful and I'm obsessed. The last plant that I'm gonna feature this month is my Monstera Esqueleto. I love this plant so much and it's just growing so well. So this is one of my imports that I did with Root Greenhouse and it had four original leaves and they were very dehydrated, very yellow. This was the best one that as far as rehabbing goes, it grew the best roots quicker and I just felt like it really acclimated well to my space. I immediately got it put on a pole as soon as I could. I'm obsessed. It's on Thickly's large grow pole and I have so many roots in here. It is crazy. I just added moss in here to the top a few days ago and I already have a new root in here where I had added to the top and you can see the roots here. Um, right here, if it's focusing. There's like new ones here attaching. And this is a new leaf that it's just giving me. It's still hardening. Monstera Esqueleto is a huge plant and I'll have to be extending this one probably soon to be like the third layer. I did repot it into my moss pole mix and um, most recently. So I feel like it might take a little bit of a hit. Um, but actually, no, I take that back. It's not even gonna be phased because I already have a new leaf coming out up top. I thought it would take a little bit of a hit. I just wanted to like put it into my substrate and I felt like, you know, just if with it being a moss pole plant, I just want that very airy and chunky soil to allow for the drainage that it needs. But yes, needless to say, I am obsessed with this plant. I love the big leaves. They're beautiful. They're so green, so vibrant. I love all the splits. So I'm obsessed. If you can get your hands on an Escaletto, I say go for it. It's definitely been one of my favorites. I can't say enough good things about it. It's so easy going. It just, 
I don't know, I feel like it's just been so easy. So I highly, highly, highly recommend this plant. Thank you for watching my favorites for this month. I'm obsessed with so many of my plants, but I feel like these ones kind of spoke to me maybe a little bit more in the last few weeks and just kind of stood out to me a little bit. And they're definitely some of my favorite plants in my collection. And I'm obsessed with some of these. I can't wait until I get more growth and my alocasia starts to do better. I feel like that was the biggest the biggest downfall, and I didn't I didn't tell you guys this either, but I'm gonna lift this up and show you my Marble Queen. Oh, do you see my Marble Queen? I broke her leaf off. I, um, I dropped all of my moss poles the other day, not all of them. I picked one up and it crashed into my Glorious, which crashed into my Marble Queen, which crashed, crashed into my Varicosum. And three of them fell onto the floor and spilled dirt everywhere. And my Marble Queen newest leaf broke. So I'm gonna frame it. I'm really sad about that. It was like, it happened right after I filmed a reel that morning of like all of my updated poles because I took them all to the shower and hosed them off and cleaned them and cleaned this area and vacuumed really good. They were all nice and clean, all nice and organized. And then I had a huge mess in here that took like an hour to clean up. But at least nothing else crazy happened. I only had one leaf casualty, my biggest leaf on my Marble Queen. It was really sad, but it'll be okay. So I'll definitely do like an update at the end of June just to kind of give you an update on everyone here. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you guys later. Meet, 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 me